chapter 16. And uh, they go on here. And uh, we're in chapter 16 and, um, you know, through the whole journey already, uh, to me, as many times as I've read the book of Acts, I keep finding things that I didn't see before or um, it didn't, you know, it didn't click or, you know, but I'm seeing it this time and, and I guarantee you the next time I read through the book of Acts, I'll see something else. Um, it is an amazing book about the early church, uh, the people who started it all the way from the day of Pentecost when it began through with the disciples and the uh, apostles who went around and started the churches and uh, then retraced their steps to make sure that the churches were functioning the way that God wanted them to. Yeah. So we're going to um, go ahead and start with 16. A um, little background about chapter 16. When was it written? Well, Paul, Silas, and Timothy's preaching journey most likely took place between the years 49 and 52 AD after the death of Christ. Um, the characters, again, will be Paul, uh, an apostle who was working in Asia Minor, planting churches. Silas, originally from Jerusalem, he accompanied Paul on second missionary journey. We'll see Timothy, a disciple from Elista, uh, or Derby, and he joined uh, Paul when he passed through the region preaching. Uh, Lydia, a woman from uh, Philippi who became one of the first converts in that city. Uh, the Philippian jailer, we'll see him. Um, he was a prison guard who became a believer after a great earthquake. Okay, where did this all happen? Well, this chapter opens with Paul and Silas visiting the churches in Derby and Lystra, Lystra. He attempted to go north, but he was prohibited by God. We'll see all of that. After passing by the region of Messiah, Paul received directions to go to Macedonia. Paul, Silas, and Timothy sailed through the North Aegean Sea to the Roman colony of Philippi. So let's start reading. Pastor Sam, you going to help me out, please? Yes. <laughs> uh, verse 1 in 16. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. Sound familiar? The son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but uh, his father was Greek. Uh, he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have, have him go with him, and he took him and circumcised him, and because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decree to keep which was determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem, so the church was strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. Amen. Yes. Did, you, did you guys notice that Timothy was, a, uh, he was part Jewish and part Greek? And see, that was something that I didn't pick up on, you know, over the times that I've read through the book of Acts, that he was, uh, his mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. Mm -hmm. which is kind of unheard of back there. But, um, but Timothy was Jewish and Greek. Okay. All right. So um, a little bit about what we just read, what Pastor Sam just read. Uh, Paul and Silas visited Derby and Lystra. And he, uh, he this is where they met uh, Timothy. They met him there and Paul, Paul asked Timothy to accompany them on their journey. Timothy agreed 
and the trio traveled from city from city to city encouraging teaching and uh, sharing the decision made by the Jewish consul in Acts chapter 15. Anybody remember what that decision was? Oh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to let somebody else answer that. Well, I, I didn't. What was the question? I was just okay. coming in. Okay, I, at the bottom, I read Timothy agreed uh, to accompany them, you know, so the trio went around teaching. And one of the things that they shared was the decision that was made by the Jewish council uh, in Acts 15. Does anybody remember what that decision was? I, I was going to say, is was it about the um, circumcision? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Remember, the, yeah, the controversy that they had. Uh, should the new converts be circumcised? You know, um, most of the Jewish people who were being converted thought, you know, they still believed in the Mosaic law, mm -hmm. uh, which told them that uh, the males would should be circumcised. But uh, so they brought it before the council. Um, Paul and Silas, Timothy wasn't with them at that time, and um, they brought it before the council and they debated and they talked about it and decided it was not necessary anymore. So uh, you didn't have to be circumcised for religious reasons. If you want to be circumcised, and a lot of people still do for health reasons, but uh, it's not a factor in your uh, salvation or in your walk with the Lord. So that, that's the difference there. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. Okay, let's go on. Now, when they had gone through Berbria and the region of Galilee, Galilee Galatia, mm -hmm. they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mycia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the, Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mycia, they came down to Taurus, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Okay, so uh, back up there in verse 7, they wanted to go to uh, uh, Mysia, and uh, they tried to, I'm sorry, they were trying to go to Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit did not let them go mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit could see things that they couldn't see. They knew he, uh, the Holy Spirit knew that they would come in into uh, contact with um, the man who wanted to wanted them to uh, go to Macedonia. Well, in the vision, and uh, so. That's where they were supposed to go to preach the gospel to them in Macedonia. And it's okay to make plans, right? It's okay to make plans. And, and probably before they set sail to go to any of these towns that we've been looking at on the map, they probably said, okay, we're going to go here. We're going to go here, gonna go here. Um, but they were open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we should be too. We plan, we plan ahead uh, for things, but if the Holy Spirit prompts you to make a, you know, make a little detour or make a change in your plans, then be open to what the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit can see things that we can't. You know, we can only see what's in front of us or we might be able to to see you know a, a few hours ahead of us but you know we can't see the complete picture the way god can so um 
that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit uh, helps us to discern uh, the, you know, the leading of the of the Lord. So, and I'm so glad that they were obedient. And that's what we have to be when the Holy Spirit leads, leads us to go contrary to where we had planned to go, then we have to be obedient and uh, and move in that direction. Any questions or did I? Well, I had a comment about the vision. I was okay. going to ask a question. What do you think? Do, do we still get visions today to do things? Paul got a vision very clearly from a man, you know. I don't think that we I don't think that we do as much as we could mm -hmm. because remember we talked about how cluttered up our yeah. our lives are mm -hmm. in our minds mm -hmm. and our heart. We got so much going on until we just don't give our full attention mm -hmm. uh, to the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit like these men did. If we if we did then we would have dreams and visions and and we would discern things that we didn't know had we not spent that time with the Lord. Okay. Yeah, I believe that when you fast and pray, what about you say, but when you fast and pray, visions are still for today. Like you said, when you get the clutter through fasting and prayer out of your mind then you still would do vision when God want to use you for a certain thing, you know, not just every day, but when you're getting ready to do things. Well, the Bible says so uh, in Acts chapter two, mm -hmm. that we will, will have dreams and vision. Mm -hmm. It covered everybody, young, old women, men um, will have dreams and visions. And uh, this is how the Lord talks to us. Mm -hmm. uh, in a in a lot of circumstance in a lot of situations that's the way he talks to us but like we keep saying we got to get the clutter out we got to spend more time with the lord and then we will hear more from him mm -hmm. uh, we won't guess about a lot of things then make mistakes mm -hmm. so if we are following the lead of the holy spirit okay anyone else okay um so Here's a little map of some of the places we've been talking about. I like to put maps up so we can kind of have a visual. So Paul receives direction from the vision in uh, the night. Uh, the Holy Spirit prevented Paul's group from going to Asia to preach. Um, he also prevented the group from going north to Bithynia to spread the gospel. And in Trosis, Paul received a vision of a man saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And he obeyed, right? So he obeyed. So that little dark line there kind of, uh, again, kind of shows you the routes that they took. Okay. So what comes to mind in that path of man, uh, mankind has been long predetermined by God. Uh, we may think that we have complete freedom to make choices for ourselves, going back to, you know, following the leads of God in the path that we have. Um, the example of Apostle Paul's life is a great example. And from the point of his stunning conversion, while he was on the, his way to persecute and kill more Christians to his impassioned missionary journeys, Paul was guided by the Holy Spirit all the way. When, once he was converted, it was no more old Paul, Paul. Too bad we can't say that about everybody, right? Would it be great if once we were converted, accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know, we just leave that old life behind and we are uh, new creatures in and out. We don't want to pick up our old habits. We don't want to do that old stuff anymore. It doesn't interest us. As a matter of fact, it's a stench in our nostrils. Amen. So we want to move forward in the Lord. And that's the way Paul was. 
you know, once he got converted, he was he was the 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 most vicious person as far as uh, getting rid of Christians. And we talked about that. He thought he was doing something great for God. But, uh, um, you know, he did a total 180 and he changed. He changed. And, and so it is with us who have the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is our greatest helper as we journey in this life. If we just remember to get the clutter out, to listen, to obey, you know, don't shake it off. If God tells you, no, don't get involved or no, don't say that. Or, no, don't open your mouth right now. You know, and we kind of shake it off and go, huh, but I got to get this out of my system. I got to do this. You know, then uh, we get in trouble, don't we? So we got to start learning how to listen and obey. So we go path, uh, we go path A and not B if the Holy Spirit prompts us to take A. So life is not a series of random events. It's really all planned out when you think about it. It's all planned out by God. Okay. All right, Pastor Sam. Okay. Uh, right. Verse 11, Lydia baptized at Philippi. Therefore, sailing from Taurus, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Napoleus, and from there to Philippi, which is the fourth most, four, foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who met us there. To the women. It was, it was more, okay. That's pretty interesting, going down to the river to pray there. Yes. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. All right. She insisted. Okay. 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 Uh, we got to give Pastor Sam a, a kudos for tackling these cities. Because, <laughs> <laughs> for tackling because, and, and we have to, you know, even when we read those, the names of people in, in the Old Testament, you know, and they got some names, I tell you, uh -huh. but try your best to pronounce them. You know, God had uh, people uh, to preserve those names so that we would have them. So we should give it a good try. We mess them up, but. Uh, I have three different versions of the Bible and each person that read them pronounce them differently. And <laughs> Oh, on your video, on your uh, video, on my video, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, what did I go back there okay, for? Okay, uh, Okay, so, well, uh, they met Lydia, and she was a seller of uh, materials and things like that in the city. I was going to ask you guys, who remember the name of the city that she was from? Look at the city, Tyra where have, where have you seen that city? In the um, in Revelations. Revelations. Okay, that was one of the seven churches mm -hmm. of, uh, that Paul that John visited. You know, um, or John John had a message from Jesus Christ to the church of Tyre. Now, my second question is: Anybody remember what the message was for Tyre? <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't, but uh, anyway, but yeah, that was word. it the lukewarm church. Well, no, that's Laodicea. Is Tyra the one about the lampstand? 
Well, all of them, that was the end where, you know, he said, if you don't uh, obey, I'll, I'll come and remove your lampstand. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, that entire Tara was, um, matter of fact, I'm turning to it so I won't make a mistake in telling you. It was the corrupt church. Okay. And, uh, and the angel... Uh, and to the angel of the church in Tyra this is the message for them. These things says the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet are like brass. Mm -hmm. He says, I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last or more than the first. But nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So they allowed Jezebel missed okay indeed i will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into a great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds i will kill her children with death and all of the churches shall know that i am he who searches the minds and the hearts and I will give to each one of you according to your words. And um, it's a little bit more, but the corrupt church, because they allowed knowingly, they allowed Jezebel in their midst. And she was going around seducing the preachers and the teachers and stuff like that. So anyway. Um, so about this section, uh, Paul and Silas and Timothy sailed to the city of Philippi in Macedonia. Outside the city, there was a river where people gathered to pray, and the trio spoke to a group of women who had gathered there. And a woman named Lydia heard them gladly and was baptized along with the rest of her family so that's what happened there with miss lydia okay pastor sam now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of deviation met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling this girl followed paul and us and cried out saying these men are the servants of the most high god who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, not to the lady, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master's she had more than one. When a master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrate and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach custom which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitudes rose up against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. All right. Oh, that was a, a fourth yeah. three day. A lot in, yeah, a lot in there. So, first of all, we see that they met this uh, slave girl. 
and she was possessed. She was possessed with a spirit of divination, okay? And she started following, following them, but she made a lot of money for her masters. So she would tell fortunes and things like that and then bring the money to, you know, her masters. So she started fo following Paul and Silas and wound up getting herself saved, <laughs> basically. And um, uh, Paul, uh, before that happened, actually, Paul got, got annoyed down here at 18. Well, uh, he commanded the spirit to come out of her. Mm -hmm. And it came out that very hour, and uh, she got saved. And her masters got really upset because she got saved because not that, you know, that they weren't willing for her to get saved, but they were saying, wait a minute, that's cutting into our profit. Our profit is gone. And so they they uh, got Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace, to the marketplace, to the authorities where uh, they would have these open courts kind of thing. And, you know, you would be charged right there on the spot and put in jail or whatever they wanted to do with you at that time. But it was all because they had, uh, the girl knew that she couldn't, you know, be telling fortunes anymore they probably told her now you say now you, you you can't be doing this and then and uh so they were brought to the magistrates and magistrates and um and and the and the charge was they're you know they are troubling our city you know teaching mm -hmm. customs that we don't like and but that wasn't the real reason right that wasn't it was the money thing so uh, a mult 22, then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. What have they done? Just preach the gospel. What have they, they had to be some tough guys back then, right? <laughs> yes. do, you, do you think people these days, you know, if you threaten a preacher who's preaching the gospel in his church or somewhere that you better stop preaching in the name of Jesus, you know, uh, this Jesus that you're preaching, or we're going to throw you in jail. We're going to take you in the middle of the street and beat you. You know what they do? Okay. I'm retiring today. You know, the average one would say, okay, I'm done. You talk about anything that is going to hurt my body or brain shame or anything like that. No, we don't want we don't want that kind of stuff. You know. And in 23, and when they had laid many stripes on them, many stripes, they beat them with a cat of nine tails. Well, they beat them with rods, it said. Oh, rods, okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in the other time they beat them with a, a cat of nine tails. I wonder which was worse. Yeah. But anyway, uh, and, and then they threw him into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? Do you think you can take that? Anybody? No, ma'am. <laughs> I remember the whoopings I got when I was 11. <laughs> that was the last whooping, too. Yeah. Was it with rods? With it was with a cane. <laughs> it was a wooden cane, walking cane. I got hit with that thing a couple of times. Oh no. I had a smart mouth. <laughs> you got a smart one now, but it's no. a good, but it's a, <laughs> no, it's a, no, but it's a good smart mouth. You're you're smart in the Bible. You're smart in the word of God. So yeah, but back then I was a dumb little crazy girl that was running <laughs> off at that mouth to my mama. <laughs> she got grandma's cane, huh? Yeah. Wow. So they put them into... Let me, let me come in on that one about the uh, slave girl. But this is what was happening. What she was doing was she wanted to... The reason she was saying these men are the, you know, men of God, she wanted them, Paul, to say yes. So if Paul would have said yes to her, then they would have thought that Paul was part of their demonic, that was the demon in the girl wanting Paul to agree with her. But when Paul 
knew that what she was trying to do, he cast the demon out of the girl. So when he cast the demon out, then that taunted the plans of the her masters because she, she could no more tell fortunes because she was telling fortunes through the demons that were in her. Right. And that's why they got really upset. Now, mm -hmm. whether she got saved or not, you don't know. But she could not tell the fortunes anymore because Paul cast the demons out. He right. told at the plan of them saying, we're one and the same. But Paul mm -hmm. said, no, this is coming from God and you're coming from the devil. Right. Mm -hmm. So spirits other than the Holy Spirit was given right. to, yeah. Did everybody understand that? That's a good point, Pastor Sam. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So demons uh, were using her. Right. And demons will oblige you. Mm -hmm. Demons will speak things that are true. Right. That's why you got to know when you are praying for someone, and we need to probably have a, a lesson on this, when you are praying for someone who is known to be possessed or oppressed in such a way where they are not in control and incoherent, or sometimes they're incoherent, but they're still so embedded in demonic activity until uh the enemy uses them and speaks through them and when you are praying for someone like that and they try to talk to you you tell them to be quiet shut up in the name of jesus okay. do not talk right do not talk to any spirit talking through a person and that's that's something a lot of people learn the hard way but uh, but anyway, that that's her story. Any questions on it? No? All right. So uh, uh, what happened? We just talked about it. One day, a slave girl who had a spirit of divination met Paul and started yelling, "These men!" That's what Pastor Sam was saying. These men are servants of the Most High who proclaim the way of salvation. Uh, she did this for several days until Paul finally commanded the spirit to depart. He recognized. He recognized that spirit and he got frustrated and, and the girl kept following them everywhere that they went. You probably just turn around and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her, depart from her right now. And you have that authority. You guys have that authority. You have the Holy Spirit. You have that authority to do that. Okay. Her owners were angry after that happened because they made money from her divinations. They seized Paul and Silas and they dragged them to the city rulers and commanded them to be beaten with rods. They threw them into the in, inner part of the prison and fastened in stocks. Now, back there in those prisons, they had the regular prison, they were all bad, but they had the regular prison. And then for the bad guys, for the really bad guys, like the murderers, they put you in the inner part, which is like even worse. That's where the big rats are. And, you know, it's really worse. And like they could get out of there, <laughs> they fastened them in stocks. Plus they had guards, you know. So it was no chance of them getting out, right? So um, they were like stuck for the rest of their lives in that inner prison. Let's talk about this for a while before we pick that back up. Since we're talking about uh, demonic worship and false gods and idols and things like that, how prevalent was idol and false god worship during the early church age was it like rampant was it something that uh, manifested itself on a regular basis or was it sporadic 
you know, and I have a question at the bottom, are these gods returning? Or the same gods that Paul and Silas uh, had to deal with um, probably on a regular basis. Everything that went on on their missionary journeys and the people that they met and the demons that they cast out, all of those things could not fit into the, the Bible would be volumes. We just know that it happened. They had to deal with it. So what I did was uh, found some of the, the more prevalent um, false gods and, and deities that was worshipped back in those days. So I'm going to read through them. There's uh, uh, quite a number of them. Uh, so the first one is Zeus. How many have heard of Zeus? Uh, yeah. Paul had Paul had been preaching that God had sent his son into the world. We can be sure of that since it is what he preached everywhere. The crowd heard just enough to misinterpret Paul. And they put his message into their Greek context and thought he was saying that the gods had come down among them as men. Okay. They identified Paul as Hermes, which is Mercury, the messenger of the gods. And since Paul was doing all the talking, Paul, Paul's uh, quite quiet colleague, um, they assumed to be Zeus, who was Jupiter. Uh, the crowd prepared to worship them. And that was part of the scripture from actually chapter uh, 15. So uh, Zeus was one of the main um, uh, got false gods that people worshipped and um, uh, I mean big time mm -hmm. you got to imagine a time when there was you know God was the presence of God was in, in power the way we know him now was very rare and remember I said you're going to worship something or someone or something you're going to and uh, Zeus was one of the more prominent um, gods of that time. The next one is Hera. Hera was the queen of the gods, queen of the gods and the protector of women. And she was the wife of Zeus, who was rampant with infidelity. As such, Hera... Hera uh, contrived several jealous plots to get rid of Zeus's many mistresses and illegitimate children. And there are also a few myths which depict Hera's motherly nature. However, such as the story of Jason and the Agronauts, um, Hera was the goddess of marriage, family, children, women and she was also the queen of the gods as she was married to Zeus the king of the gods um so basically like if a woman wanted to have a child and she wasn't able to then she would seek the presence or the advice of Hera you know and um the connection that she would make, the worship of this God would help her to uh, conceive and have a child. She um, she was also the God of the family, marriage, and all anything connected like that. Okay, Poseidon. Poseidon was said to help the Greeks against the Trojans during the Trojan War. Poseidon had domain over the legendary uh, Atlas, uh, uh, Atlantis, I'm sorry, a fictional island that was cast into the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. These are all gods and goddesses and 
things that people worshiped instead of God, looking for help in their time of need instead of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. They would reach out to these uh, entities. Artemis. Artemis was the goddess of chastity, hunting, and the moon. And she was often depicted with her trusty bow and arrow and a short tunic to aid in running through the woods. Okay, so that's who she was. Athena. Athena was one of the 12 chief Olympian deities and the goddess associated with wisdom, craft, and warfare. She was a warrior. In wars where she was most completely depicted, Athena embodied cold rationality, tactics, and strategy. So that was her MO. And so I would assume if there was a war, they would pray to Athena for help to, you know, go before them to help win the battles, or whatever. Hermes. Hermes uh, was an ancient Greek god of trade, wealth, luck, fertility, animal husbandry, sleep, language, thieves, and travel. So these are all of the things that they would reach out to Hermes for help and uh, success. He is also the god of speed and travel. Look at him go. And look him, sports. Look at him, look, look, look at his little feet go. Well, that's why they made him the god, one of the goddess of sports. In the mm -hmm. Olympics. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Speed. Ares. Names also. Most famously known as the god of war. He was the first child of Zeus and Hera. His symbols include the boar, which is a just like a uh, a bear, right? Yeah, boar, a dog, a wolf, a spear, a sword, and a vulture. His Roman counterpart is Mars. Okay, so that's Aries. Okay. Uh, Gaia. Gaia is the goddess of the earth. This is the one that they call Mother Earth. She was the mother of all, the pre, uh, preeminal mother. At a uh, cosmogenic level, she symbolized the material side of the universe, whereas chaos symbolized another god symbolized the space of the universe and and uh there were several pictures for me to choose from and i chose the one to, to the far right because it reminded me of the pose that they use in yoga so i think uh, Gaia was had something to do with uh, yoga. Had that pose, you know, whatever. But she was she was a looker, wasn't she? Look at her. That's part of nature worship. Yes, mm -hmm. Earth, right. Uh, Arrow. Much alive today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Arrow symbolized. The driving force that unites everything, giving birth to the rest. Apollo. Apollo was the god of the sun, the light, and music, and prophecy. He is the son of Zeus, um, Zeusa, I'm sorry, 
and the Titan Leto and was born in the Greek island of Delos, along with his older twin sister, Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Apollo's powers were buried, but he is mostly associated with the power of prophecy. He bestows the gift of prophecy on some of his lovers and favorites, he also had the power to heal, to shape shift, to, to manifest, you know, different shapes of things, uh, and eternal youth. He had great musical skills and was associated with his godlike powers. So that's his little MO. That's Apollo. It's a theater name, Apollo, too, right? In, well, that's what we talk talking about, how the gods have come back. They use all of those things, yes. It's been around for the Apollo Theater or something like that. Yep, it's been, been there already, yes. It's in New York. Aphrodite. Aphrodite was the Greek goddess of love, beauty, and sensuality. The Romans called her Venus. Aphrodite is not explicitly named in the Bible, but she still shows up in the name of Aphroditus, who was the brother, a co-worker, and fellow soldier of Paul. We read about him in Philippians too. The name Aphroditus means belonging to Aphrodite. So his name is associated with her directly. Uh, with Aphrodite, belonging to Aphrodite, the name of the goddess is actually incorporated into his name. Interesting. I found out this stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Do I have another one? Okay. All right. That was the last one. There's more. But uh, I thought I'd stop there. But anybody ever saw this picture? This picture is seen in a whole lot of rotundas in government buildings. Wow. And, it's, and it's it's basically, people just think it's so pretty, it's so pretty. But it's really a collection of all of those false gods. Mm -hmm and goddesses and okay so what is that saying if we if it's in the rotunda i mean what what is it saying if it's in the government rotunda of our buildings that um that people meet in to make laws and decisions for our country I mean, anybody want, can you make a connection there before I say something? I mean, what 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 does that say to you that we have uh, false gods uh, in, in our government? And this picture is somewhere else, but, you know, uh, it's, you see them if you go to different government buildings, different capitals, and different, uh, uh, you know, wh where they have the have the real tall rotundas and pictures all over the place, and and um, this is one that you see a lot. So, anybody, what does that what does that was, say to you? Go ahead. I was gonna say, does it have something to do with power? Uh, okay, explain. Because the government, the government has the power to be over. I mean, to make the laws for the people. Okay, so it's saying. I don't know. No, go ahead. So it's saying that. What is it saying to the the um, the senators? Say the senators and the legislators, and uh, are you saying that they think they get their powers from them? To to govern, is, yeah. is that what you're yeah, saying? Kind of, kind of what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I'm I'm just thinking. That's that's what I was thinking. Powers, um, 
because it's in the government building and like you say the senators the all the people that is in authority mm-hmm. okay. that this might i don't know i'm i don't know <laughs> yeah, i'm just be. guessing I agree with you, Sister Joyce. I think that they think they get their powers from those. They are looking up to them in a way, you know, that we yeah. know what's going on. Okay, Benita was saying something. Their spirits, it's like the spirit is in there. The spirits are in there and government is not a good thing, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pastor Sam had a key point that I wanted you guys to think about. Say that again, Pastor Sam. Do you remember what you just said? Oh, well, I just said, I think they're looking up to them for their they're power. Looking up. They're looking up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're looking yeah. up. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly. Mostly, I would say knowingly. Uh-huh. A lot of people know what they're doing. They're not just saying, oh, these are some cute old pictures. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are Remember, in one of the questions I put way back when we, you know, when I started showing you these different uh, in- entities, uh, are they returning? Are people still involved in it? Like, or did they ever go away? <laughs> Didn't ever go well, away. Well, well, that- well, it went dormant for a while, but then now it's returning. Ahead, right. In the nineteen sixties, it came back really strong. Yes, I was going to say, Pastor Sam. Um, did that lesson on the return of the guys from uh, Jonathan Khan, and he's right. showing us how these guys, like you said, Pastor Sam, they were dormant, and uh-huh. now they're coming back. Right. Uh-huh. They're coming back. Making a comeback. So, <clears throat> in other words, when just- we kick the, let me say this, when we kick the, you know, like you pray for a person, and you cast out a demon, and that person go back and sin, and the demon say, well, Okay, now the demon is out, but if that person is living right, well, the house is clean. I'm going to come back. And go the Bible that same thing has happened to America and the rest of the world. We kick prayer out of school. We kick prayer out of everything. So the, the house Bible is clean, you know. Says, so now the demon said, no, we go back and move in. And they have moved back in, yes. Right. They, they go into dry places right. until... A door is open. Remember, mm-hmm. we always talk about watching your gates, watching your, um, you know, people that you hang around, um, doors that you open, um, being, you know, curiosity seekers. Uh, this thing, TikTok, that they've been talking about, you know, trying to get rid of or whatever. A lot of that stuff is on TikTok you know, uh, this craziness. So we're opening doors, uh-huh. opening doors on an individual basis and we're opening doors as a country, mm-hmm. okay? So our country rules or makes the rules for the people. The people elect them and they make the rules for the people. Well, it doesn't take a a, a, a rocket science scientists to see that our legislators are people that we are putting into office now Mm -hmm. or not seeking the god of glory they're they're not seeking them otherwise the country wouldn't be a mess like it like it is Mm -hmm. look at what's happening down in georgia look at all of this stuff Mm -hmm. so what i'm saying is all of this is because uh, as a country, as a, as a nation, as a people, we have basically walked away from God. Yes. And you're going to serve something or someone, like I said at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so the, the gods, the idols uh, are there to appease. They're yeah. saying, here we are, we'll help you. You need help with your farming. You need help with your ch- children. You need help with this, you know. So you got all of these entities, these false gods from Satan. Not a false who, god or nothing, but uh, will come into imagination and, and make a stature. And then they have, the devil have to have some kind of object or person to work through. 
So he used those false gods, those statues, and those writings and those paintings and the statue like they got on the top of the Missouri State Capitol, you know, and all those kinds of places and all over the That is a god of agriculture. Yes, the god the of the agriculture, of right. They have to have some, and the demons come in and work through them. Right. So, but uh, there's, uh, there's a lot, but just to, you know, since uh, we were in 16 and we talked about the girl that, had, you know, uh, had divination and uh, working with uh, powers of the enemy, mm -hmm. it's, it wasn't just then, it's still going on. Like we said, it was dormant, but now it's making a comeback because the further a people get away from God, the more the enemy will come in, right. yeah, you know, uh, and and take the place of where God should be in our life, in our country, in our families. So shame on us! And shame on us for allowing this to happen yes. and kicking God out of school, mm -hmm. kicking God out of the church. Mm -hmm. I sent you guys a video of the nightclub. The first Christian nightclub. And I knew I was going to get some controversy. So I, I like controversy. So I put it on Facebook to see what people would say. Do you know that the majority of the people were saying, what's wrong with it? They're not serving alcohol. You know. They're not, you know, they're, it's just a bunch of young people getting together and you know, what happened to Fellowship Hall at church? You know, it's so, these are Christian people. Most of the people I have on Facebook are like pastors and, and you know, a Christian, Christian, I thought they were Christian people. So I don't have too many nuts. Every once in a while you get some nuts on there that kind of, you wonder where they came from, you know, you come from. But most of these are people that, you know, on any other subject, they would, you know, quote the Bible or whatever. But then every once in a while, you get something like this because it, it just tells you that they are falling into the, you know, uh, the, uh, the way of the world. They're falling into the way of the world. There's no other way to put it. No other way to put it. Uh, somebody said, well, I know a church down in Springfield that not only had a, uh, um, uh, tried to uh, have something like a nightclub thingy, but the big thing was they had a, uh, what was it, Pastor saying? They had an, um, a day, a fundraiser where they did tattoos. Yes. Yeah. They had a fundraiser where they did tattoos. You know, this is in the church. This is in the church. And so, the Bible plainly you know, says you never to alter, cut yourself, or do any kind of things like that, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's that's that. Yeah. Uh, all that is, any questions on any, any of these things? Any comments, questions? Okay. All right, let's go on. So where do we leave off? But I wanted to, since we were talking about the girl, I wanted to get that part in. So we're still talking about Paul and Silas. They're in jail now. They're in the inner cell. They're in the bad part. Okay, pass the same. Well, I love this one. The jailer gets saved that. That's it, man. Huh? Five. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And they're in stocks and all like that. And the prisoners were listening to them, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chain loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do, do yourself no harm, for you are all here.
Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, to all who were in his house, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, you know, cleaned up Paul and Silas where they had been beaten, and immediately he and all his family was baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God and all of his household. That's okay. amazing. Okay, so they were in, in the jail. We thought they were going to be in there forever and ever, right? Yeah. And uh, so they had the nerve to be praying and singing. Yes. You know, and uh, so, but other prisoners were listening. And then there was an earthquake. Earthquake did it. Earthquake did it, guys. And the whole prison began to shake. Doors flew open. And not only their chains came off, everybody's chains came off. You know, when the uh, when the Holy Spirit does something, he does it in totality, right? So all of the chains just flew all over the place, okay? And the keeper, he was kind of asleep over there in his little chair. You know, he thought that they had fled or fleeing, and he got his sword. He was about to kill himself. Because he knew what? He knew he was going to be in trouble. If they found out that he was asleep in, and all of these guys got out, well, he said, I might as well kill myself because they're going to do it. And he drew his sword. And Paul said, do yourself no harm. For we're all here. We're all here. Don't, don't kill yourself. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down and trembled. Okay. And what did he do in verse 30? Uh -huh. see, that'll get you saved, won't it? You see something like that, you know? He fell down and he says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Those are words that Man, yes. we hear people say that. We have loved ones that we know are, that are not saved. We, we have friends that we know that are not saved. We have neighbors that we know that are not saved. You know, and, and those are words to a pastor's or minister's ears. What, what do I need to do? What what should, what must I do to be saved? And simply, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. So they, they spoke the word of the Lord to them and to everybody that was in the house. Okay. You believe on Zeus. You don't beat on Hermes. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so they took care of him. You know, washed them up and everything, gave them some food and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his household. Well, isn't that a beautiful story? It, 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 that's one of, the, uh, you know, I think I said it earlier, 16 is one of my favorite chapters in my favorite book. So I think I've said that probably about every chapter, but truly 16 is because... I mean, the power of God was so, so vivid, you know, to a point where this guy was going to kill himself. He didn't know it was the power of God. He, he thought, you know, these guys had found his keys and let themselves out or something. Whatever. He just knew he was a goner. He knew that they were going to kill him or do something, you know, put him in jail. But Paul stopped him. You know, he knew he knew what was going through his mind. Okay. That's the same one. 
Paul refused to deport uh, secretly. They wanted him to just take off and run, but no, he went back. Okay. 35. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officer saying, let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrates had sent to let you go. Now therefore deport and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans and have thrown us into prison. And now they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. <laughs> That's boldness. That's boldness. Yes. That's boldness. And, and you know, I keep saying modern Christians, you know, in that same situation, how would you handle it? Probably quite different. But Paul was is no different than us. Paul is no different than us. He's, he's just one of the first Christians that God used to get the church started. He and his fellow workers, no different than us. And 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 I believe that God um uses these situations, these stories, and these things that Paul and the other guys went through to show us we can do the same thing. It doesn't say this is just for Paul. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, greater works will you do, right? Greater works will you do because I'm going to the Father. In other words, you can do you can do the same thing I'm doing. There's only one of me. There's going to be thousands and millions of you guys. And just think if thousands and hundreds and thousands and millions now, people all over the world get saved and and, and begin to act like Paul and Silas and 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 the rest of the guys that uh, was with him. And operate like the early church with no schisms, no jealousy, no, you know, arguing over the color of the carpet and all of that craziness. But that's what's keeping the church of today from operating in the same power that Paul and the others were using. And that's why God used them mightily. I'd use them mightily. Okay, read that little section for me, please. Okay, 38. And the officers told these words to the magistrate, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans, not supposed to be the Roman citizen. Then mm -hmm. they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So oh, they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them, and then they departed. And departed. Amen. I was That's power. That's That's power, it. and that is, you know, just steadfastness mm -hmm. to complete the job that you got to do, mm -hmm. no matter what. No matter what. Literally, you went to work right away, if you notice, right after she got saved and baptized. Mm -hmm. And was working with why, Paul. Why wait? You know. Why wait? Okay, so what happened at midnight? Paul and Silas were singing hymns in a prison. The there was a great earthquake. The doors flung open, open, and everybody's bonds were unfastened. The jailer almost killed himself, thinking all of the prisoners had escaped. But Paul and Silas stopped him, and he asked Silas. And Paul, what he needed to do to be saved. The two preachers taught the jailer and his whole family about Jesus, and they were all baptized that night. <laughs> when it was discovered that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens and had been beaten unlawfully, the city rulers let them out of prison and apologized and uh the the preachers visited visited Lydia before departing to another city mm -hmm. so that's what happened there that's what ha happened there how can we apply this 
going to do this and then we're going to stop for the night. Um, your positive, um, this is how we apply what we learned tonight. Your positive attitude during difficult, during, I'm sorry, well, that's good too. Your positive attitude during times of trial and difficulty can have a huge impact on the people observing you. That's a true statement, right? That's a true statement because the way you handle a situation and an, un an unbeliever is looking and observing, it's going to have an impact on their life. You know, they're going to see that, hey, they didn't groan, they didn't moan, they didn't curse somebody out, they didn't get angry. They just waited on the power of the Holy Spirit. They just kept calm and was obedient. And so, all right, Paul and Silas were beaten and chained in prison, but they found joy in Jesus and they were singing hymns during their incarceration. I wonder what they were saying, Amazing Grace? Probably. <laughs> it hadn't been written yet. <laughs> Whatever they were singing, though, <laughs> yeah. must have had a big effect on the jailer because after the earthquake, he immediately ran up to Silas and Paul and asked what he needed to be saved. So it must have been a powerful song. Yes. Maybe it was, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am on a child. Road, on the road to Jerusalem. No, they weren't saying that. <laughs> they were out of Jerusalem. <laughs> Maybe a little song. When we well, rejoice through suffering rather than sulking through it, we may be impacted, impacting rather people in powerful ways, even if we never are aware of the impact. Just always do the right thing. Because you never know who's looking at you. But I guarantee you this. If you handle things in the wrong way. Around an, an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. if you handle it in the wrong way. If they see you acting outside of your Christian character. You have lost your witness to them. You can never witness to them. Because they're going to always have in their mind what you just did or how you handled that situation, how you blew up, how you uh, maybe used some words that should have been in the sea of forgetfulness or in somebody's garbage can. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, how you, you know, uh, just rolled your eyes or rolled your neck or you know just your attitude and how you and and then you can't go back to that person later and say you know what I want to tell you about Jesus it ain't gonna work okay okay whatever they were singing must have had a big effect on the jailer because after the earthquake, he immediately ran up to uh, Silas and Paul and asked what he needed to be saved. I, I repeated that. When we rejoice through sufferings rather than sulking through it, we may be impacting people in powerful ways, even if we don't know the impact. Why did I repeat that? Okay, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So any questions or comments? Well, I'm in recording, please. I am. Go ahead. Did you have a question? Well, I was just going to say, I think also 